What's going on, guys? If you've done any programming with the large language models, OpenAI, Grok, Llama 3, you get the same thing. Uh, you want the data to come in and you're probably going to want it constrained into some sort of JSON format so that you can then pull pieces out and use it for the rest of your program or your automation. And uh, you might find that you spend a reasonable amount of time fixing the output. Um, now, the large language models, the large language models have come a long way since uh, 2022 when we first started to try to coerce them into structured output. And now they all attempt to offer a JSON mode. But you might have discovered that uh, it's pretty hit and miss whether it uh, works and you might find yourself having to rerun automations or programs or attempt to pull out the, the structure from what you want. And that's fine, it's been okay. But today, OpenAI has offered a new strict mode of structured output, which, let's have a look, offers 100% reliability. And 100% is a lot better than 99.999 because if you're running a million uh, scripts running or 100,000 or 10,000, every decimal place from 100 is errors. And for them to offer 100% reliability can really massively improve the simplicity of our automations uh, because we can just trust that we're always going to get a uh, the structured data that we're, we're looking for. Now, um, so this article came out uh, this week and it's totally worth, worth a look through. We'll have a look together uh, at some interesting aspects. So what did they do to make this work? Now, for, firstly, where is this available? It's available in both their uh, function calling um, within their assistance so where, where you might be having a conversation with LM and the LMM decides it needs to call a function to get some values. It now, there is a strict mode and that promises that uh, you'll get the right JSON structure. Um, now, if you're using make.com, uh, you're probably not using that. You're probably using uh, more of a chat completion. Unfortunately, we now have a strict mode for that as well. And we'll look shortly at how we are uh, going to, how that works in the API and how we get to use that inside of make.com because Right now, it's it's uh, not a trivial thing, and we do need to uh, know a couple things to make that work. So that's what we're going to talk about in this video: is getting that working in Make.com. Um, but first, let's look at what it is and uh, and how we're going to use it. The uh, the structured output um, is is as I said, often a couple of ways. So if you've done any programming, you might have used some of the programming libraries. Um, where you call the, uh, the, the conversation, you have a, a discussion and you offer it some tools or functions uh, to say, these are the functions that if you ask me to call, I, the programmer, can run those functions, get your result, give it back to the large language model and the large language model can continue its conversation. Um, for example, calculators and weather are the two most famous uh, examples, but also interacting with uh, with your CRM or with your uh, order system, other sorts of structured um, behavior. The one we're gonna be looking at today is the other format, which is uh, a new response format parameter. Now, what is the original one? Well, let's just have a look at, um, let's have a look what we've got in uh, make.com as a way of, of playing with our OpenAI. So here is the standard, um, here is the standard uh, um, OpenAI module that we have. And we'll see what we've got as availability. So here we've got the different uh, um, uh, chat completions. There's, there's more than that, but that's okay. Um, the different models uh, available. We've got the 4.0 and the 4.0 mini, and if you're watching this in the future, there, there will be others. Um, the, uh, the, 8, the 08, 06 are the ones mentioned in the document. Um, and they'll be linked to this one. So if you're picking 4.0, you should be now getting 08, 06. Um, and if you read all the way to the document, um, uh, you'll find there's a, there's a pleasant surprise in the pricing uh, that they've thrown in right at the bottom. All right, and here's how we might normally use this. We might say, as a user, solve this function, x, uh, y equals x uh, squared plus 2x plus 1. And we'll give it some max constraint. And then we'd run this. And let's just see what we get. Uh, the result uh, is placed here and you can see it's not only given us a result but also a complete discussion of how it's come about the result and it's got some formatting that assumes that you're going to display this in a place that knows how to use this formatting. 
and, and then so it's all very conversational but what if we're looking for an answer that's it's pulled out into parts what if we want the steps to be uh, structured so that we can display those in a, in a nice way where we can easily pull those out and the answer to be easily found and put in you know, in a structure so that we pull it out and put it somewhere um, then what we might do is to try to use the um, response format down here which is under here down near the bottom called response format and there's two options as at the time of recording now they've only just released the third option which is the uh, JSON schema but right now there's two and by default you're using the text format but you can also use the JSON format the JSON object format which has been useful uh, both in terms of OpenAI uh, also Grok uh, and the Llama 3 that, that Grok uh, has a couple models that they've done some special training on to make them more amenable to producing JSON um, but uh, but here this is similar right so it's not the JSON schema that we're going to be talking about the structured output this is what we already had and how might we use it um, we have to instruct it to produce JSON either in the system or user message um, and probably give it an example so let's go and do that so let's uh, add a system message uh, you are good at solving maths and think through the problem step by step you produce the JSON format uh, let's say we want uh, steps uh, um, uh, we want explanation explanation and output so there's some steps and then we want the final answer y equals da 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 da, da let's see what that now looks like when we give it that sort of coercion we're both given a system prompt to say we'd like to think through things in a sort of step-by-step -step manner uh, that it already had an inclination to do uh, but also to try to put the answer in a JSON format okie dokie let's move that across so the result is here uh, you can sort of see that the uh, output is in that structured um, and that's looking pretty good now uh, in our um, make.com we need to now parse that let's just uh, this is a string so let's copy and paste that string run this module only yes I don't care um, oh I see sorry we skipped a step take that result and now if we run this module only we can paste that in and down here you see that because we got structured output we can now easily put that into a, uh, a make.com bundle and now we can easily pull uh, the final answer out and do it or we can take the steps and so we've got a couple of ideas here one is the structured output and the other is a uh, chain of thought thinking which uh, models are getting better at which is rather than just blurt out the first answer they think of it's to get them to think through the steps and as they think through the steps that is that thinking becomes part of the context of their conversation so it sort of guides them towards uh, a good answer so that one worked now the problem we're trying to deal with in structured outputs is that if I ran that a lot um, it eventually might error or not give the same structure or and somehow go off the rails a little bit um, and so we won't keep doing that we'll just trust um, that this was a problem worth solving um, because uh, if we look at their graph we can see that uh, a year ago when GTP4 came out, year and, year and a half ago, um, you know, even though it was, they started to talk about JSON as a, as a, a, sister, a structured data format that people wanted, uh, it was still only good at producing at 33, 34% of the time. Um, and then as the models have come out, they've gotten better. But even if it was 90, 90%, 95%, 99%, um, calling that API enough, you're still gonna to have to deal with errors. And if you don't trust that you're always going to get the right structure, then you have to build um, behavior after the calls to clean it up or to check or to rerun. 
So 100% is, is just gives us so much more uh, simplicity in how we use our models, uh, whether you're doing software programming or, or an automation system like make.com. So this is going to be fantastic. So back to here, the challenge we have is that if you were to try to do this now, in make.com as of today, the, make, the uh, open A module does not have this new response um, format. And, uh, and as we look at how it works, you'll see that it's not just a matter of them adding a, a third one. They're going to have to add that if you pick that third one, uh, a way to describe the JSON format. So we're going to uh, do that today manually and maybe you'll then have a little understanding of, of how this works. Uh, and so when they do upgrade this, um, which hopefully is soon, then you'll have an idea of how to use it. All right, so I've got a couple of, of um, what have we got? Let's go back. So I've got a couple of, of uh, little demonstration stuff set up. Now this maths tutor uh, takes on this idea of what we just looked at before, which is a maths problem and splitting it up. And uh, we'll uh, quickly have a look at what the, I've just broken it out, uh, not because it was important, because it's just a bit of clarity. So here is the problem. Um, you can imagine, you know, where, where the problem's going to be coming in through some sort of input. So this is just, you know, might be a webhook or a Google spreadsheet uh, of problems. Um, and here is the question. Um, the schema, now this is a little difficult to read, but it's, uh, think of it like being a big, uh, we had a very small example before of what the structure looks like, and that worked pretty well. Jason's schema is uh, an open standard for how to describe JSON. Uh, what is the bits and pieces in it, whether they're optional, whether they're required. Um, and so it takes a little bit of reading to look at what we're looking for here. So what it says is that the, the outside of this is not an array and it's not a string, it is an object with keys and values, okay? And so inside that object, there are some properties. Uh, the, one of the properties is steps, we saw that before. And the other property is final answer, which has just got a type string. So that one's a simple one. Uh, we expect that the final answer will have a key called final answer. Uh, sorry, the, the final resulting JSON objects should always have a key called final answer with a value that's a string. We want that. But what we also want before is this steps property because this is going to let uh, the large language model do the chain of thought thinking. Um, so we might not care about the steps. We might throw them away. But this is really a tool for the language model itself to think about what it's doing whilst being inside structured data. It's a very clever idea. Um, and so this, uh, we could use it, we could throw it away, but it is for the benefit of the language model itself um, to think aloud, so to speak. So steps might be another way of saying, you know, think aloud. And so steps is an array of objects. So now we have another uh, type object here with properties. So whereas outside we had properties, steps, and final answer, inside each step we have properties, explanation, and output, which are both strings. So a very verbose way of describing what you want, but it is a, a standard, um, and as such we can find tools uh, online. Not a lot of tools, and they're not very good, but we can find them for uh, describing. Um, let's Let's build this from scratch. So this, this JSON builder is, is as good as, as any. If you find a better one, please link it in, in, the, uh, in the comments uh, because if one is uh, likely. All right, so the one we're building, if we were to describe it, was we had steps. Um, that was an array of objects, okay? And the other outside bottom one was final answer, which was a string. Now inside this object, we had uh, explanation, which was a string, and uh, um, um, some sort of intermediate output. And that is the structure. And so you could describe it that way. Um, and then JSON schema is essentially we can copy and paste that. And so that what is what essentially is being copied and pasted into this field here is just the output of the schema builder. Um, now, a couple of other things that you need um, to make OpenAI's API happy. One, uh, as per the document, um, what have we got? So there's a couple things. One is um, every property in an object is required. That might set it to nil, but you need to describe it as required. I don't know why, but this is maybe is what's helped their structured output uh, wrapper work well. 
So we need to have a required, for each of the properties of an object need to be required. The other thing is if you miss out on adding this additional properties false, uh, you'll get an error for reasons that I don't understand either. And that's a little annoying because this schema builder tool does not add that in. So, but nonetheless, let's go through those two extra requirements. We need to make every field required. Okay. And as I mentioned, we also need to add that additional parameters properties. So let's copy and paste this in here. Um, that's that there. Now let's just run this and see that it errors because we're missing something. Uh, so it's saying this is an error. Um, but let's go and have a look down here. Data error. It's saying an invalid schema was provided um, because the additional properties uh, key was missing. So we need to manually add that in. So everywhere where we have an object and everywhere we have required, we can just go and add additional, oops, additional properties false. So we have one for the steps and then down here for the outer one, we have that there as well. Save that, let's give that another run. And so now we have a look and we can see that the final answer is X equals four. I guess that depends on what the question was. Solve for this. Now that's uh, some grade seven mathematics. Let's have a look at its, uh, its thinking. And we can see that we had a nice structured, 100% um, guaranteed nice structured uh, explanation. And so now we can pull those steps out if we wanted, uh, but we can most definitely pull that final answer out. This is fantastic. So we've seen the JSON schema, we need that. Now, where do we put it? Uh, and why am I using the HTTP module? Well, I'm using the HTTP module because I cannot use the OpenAI module. The OpenAI module not only doesn't support this new format, but it also doesn't have an arbitrary call and API endpoint, um, which is just a little bit annoying. So you'll need to set up your credentials. Um, to do that, you'll, uh, you know, you'll do OpenAI here. Uh, you'll get your um, you'll get your kit your your, your uh, API key here, okay, from from OpenAI. But you also need to add the word bearer to the front with a space. And down here, you put the word authorization. So your parameter key authorization bearer with a space, and then your token, and then you're good to go. Um, we're making a post to the API endpoint uh, raw JSON, and then. We've got our, um, go away, go away, go away, go away, go away. Okay, so just to start at the inside, here is that JSON schema we described that we're gonna pass that in. You, you don't need to do this in two steps. I did it because I think it helps explaining it to, uh, to yourself um, to see this is the JSON schema that we could pull out from a builder and uh, we need to pop it in here. Um, so the rest of this, if you've ever done some low level open AI programming or using their API, you might've seen this before. Here's our model. Um, we might throw in a temperature here of, of 0 0.3, something like that. Um, here are our string of messages, uh, system prompt, your helpful mathematics tutor. Um, uh, I'm in Australia, so we, we've always done maths uh, because we didn't argue with the British about everything. Um, and then the user, which is the, uh, the prompt coming in. If, if it comes in as a, as a fully formed prompt, then pass it straight in if we need to format it. Anyway, you don't understand. Now, this is the part that changes with our structured outputs. Um, we now change from uh, having type text or type uh, JSON format to this new uh, syntax of uh, this new type, which is JSON schema. In addition to the JSON scheme, we, what we can't do in the OpenAI is provide this extra key um, underneath response format, which is called JSON schema. Um, and then uh, probably the name isn't that important, but the next two things are important. Uh, strict true, super important, and this schema key with our schema being passed in. That's the magic. If that's, uh, at this point, you now have uh, everything to be dangerous um, and I wish you well. But I will uh, give uh, a couple more examples in the rest of this video um, to show that working. Uh, 
the next. So let's take that was an example that came from their documentation uh, of the helpful maths tutor. Um, in fact, you know, we could we could solve that one using what we've set up. Um, and you can see there is an example uh, of the JSON output. And of course, we uh, have already parsed that so we can pull the values out inside make.com. A couple of uh, uh, um, comparisons of between the existing JSON mode and what the new structured outputs um, or the JSON schema mode is. Obviously, both uh, produce valid JSON, but um, the JSON mode may not adhere to the uh, schema that you've requested. Um, and if you've been doing AI programming a lot or prompt engineering, you may have a very long sentence just trying to coerce it, you know, threatening it. Uh, to, to kill babies, uh, offering at $10,000 bribes, anything for it to behave itself. Um, but uh, uh, sometimes just don't get the right thing. Um, you do need to make sure you're using some of the, the new models um, and uh, you'll need to pass in strict true. Uh, a bit of a consequence is if uh, outside of make.com, if you're using parallel function calling, um, you uh, currently cannot use that with structured outputs. So you need to turn that off. Um, Okie dokie. So the rest of that document you can read for yourself. Uh, if it cannot do something, it will not produce the wrong JSON. It will explicitly refuse um, and you'll be able to pick that up uh, in your testing. Um, there is a subset of JSON schema. Uh, I can't spot exactly what's missing. Um, so these look pretty good to me. Um, maybe time is missing. Um, but uh, anyway, you'd be able to do pretty well at that. Um, all fields must be required, uh, which we discussed, and the additional properties field is required. Uh, must be set for all objects. Uh, there is some limits to how big and complex you can make this. Uh, and not only that, there is some sort of internal compilation step, um, which the documentation will get to in a second. Uh, some keywords here are some of the keywords that you might have seen if you've done JSON schema descriptions before uh, but these are not listened to um, definitions you can do definitions look if you've done JSON schema read the document you'll see the nuances uh, they discuss JSON mode is just a more basic version um, obviously it still works in the sense of what it does and doesn't work at um, all right so that was one document I apologize we switched the wrong document um, accidentally. That was the uh, uh, sort of the internal document guide. Um, back to the actual formal blog post that came out. I'm sorry. So structured data uh, libraries, uh, we're not using those. And um, yeah, this is all good. We discussed this, we discussed the required uh, fields. A um, couple of interesting examples of what this is useful for because, because it's now you can guarantee that will give you the structure that you wish. You could have like a pseudo structure for what a, uh, a website looks like. Um, and so if you were to describe a, a pseudo structure of, you know, divs and headers and divs, and you can sort of see this kind of looks like um, a web page. And as such, uh, you could get it to generate something that will always be that simple web structure that you could then render. So they've got some examples here producing uh, websites that will always work because they 100% guarantees the right structure. Um, the uh, the supporting of reasoning additional commentaries is fantastic. The idea of having something in your JSON output that you might not need yourself, but that the API will use, or sorry, the large language model will use for thinking. It's called chain of thought, um, and it uh, can really improve the output of the AI by giving it some room to think. Um, if you've ever ask the human for an urgent response to something versus take your time and think through, um, you'll get uh, far better responses, especially if their large language model can realize it's thinking down the wrong path and can then rethink. Um, hopefully they get better at that. Um, structured data from unstructured data, obviously that's fantastic. You know, if you can give it a large, uh, large dialogue of a, from a meeting and say, here's the structure of what we want it to pull out. Um, this is just awesome. Under the hood, you look, the rest of this is really interesting, but you can read it. I just want to get to the um, limitations, um, some of which we've discussed. Uh, make sure that you have a max token that's big enough, otherwise it will possibly just error. Um, 
And right, this one here. So the first API response, whenever you change that schema, uh, the first response may incur additional latency, which means time, um, because it's sort of compiling it to some degree on the inside and caching those artifacts uh, for later reuse. A typical schema can take under 10 seconds to process the first, a more complex one could take up to a minute. So you'll, you'll no doubt spot that um, when you're testing. And hopefully we don't get any timeouts um, inside of make.com if you've made your schema too complex. And zero. So this is available in all good places. Interesting bonus right at the end. Uh, in switching to the latest model, you might have hard coded yourself to an earlier model to guarantee that you get the same behavior. But if you do switch to the new model, uh, they've dropped the price by 50% on inputs and uh, a third on outputs. So that's, you know, a nice little bonus thrown in there at the end. All right, we will now finally uh, look at a couple more examples. Um, we have um, just, I've thrown in my own uh, personal description that I pulled out from my, from my uh, the bottom of my YouTube videos. And let's see if we can get it to pull out a, uh, to describe a welcome sentence for a cold email that I want to send myself. Similar idea, I've got the, uh, the final welcome, I actually borrowed the steps and final answer structure. That was a pretty good one. Um, so here is the, uh, final welcome that I wish to use. Um, sounds a weird conflict there, final and welcome. And then I've got the same idea of a, a steps or a thinking um, process to allow it to sort of think about why it wants to say what it wants to say. The uh, This is the same as before um, in that uh, I have a different uh, um, system message, which is fine. Um, and obviously I'm passing in that uh, that input and but this part here is the same and that we've got response format type JSON JSON schema uh, and then giving it some name and then the schema comes in there uh, and let's give that a run and we've passed we'll pull these out um, your impressive journey of software development and automation from rails to AI truly reflects the innovative spirit we value and aim to engage with. I'm pretty sure I would reply to any email that bullshitted me with that. Um, so here is the sort of the thinking it went through, highlight the perspective's background, focus on their expertise, and then emphasizing a long history. And, uh, and sort of it has its own thinking, which is really quite interesting. Uh, you might now be thinking, well, hang on, what if, uh, now how complex can I get? Now that I can start to trust that the data is, is gonna work, I, I'm less scared to run more AI. Um, what if I wanted to ask it to generate three uh, prompts, three different welcomes, and then I'll use more AI to figure out which is the best one. Let's have a look. This first part is the same idea as before, it's just copy and pasted, except I've updated uh, the to add three. So n equals three means it, the uh, OpenAI will run the same thing three times and give you three choices to, to use. Um, and then I pull those choices out uh, as an array, so this is an iterator. And now we'll do those, uh, inside each of those, we'll uh, pass that content for each one, uh, pull out the welcome value, and then uh, I'm going to combine those back together so we've got three welcomes, combine them back into one string separated by a semicolon. Then we will uh, ask another AI model, can you help me pick the best one? You help me write welcome email sent. Uh, I'll give you three options, pick the best one. Let's run that. So now this step is, is producing not one output, but three outputs. So it will take more time. Uh, you can see that it's went through all uh, went through three and three and then merged them back into one and then uh, we ran this and it errored why did it error what if i missing value parameter json da -da, da -da, da -da, da. what have i broken did i touch something prior to recording da -da, da -da. Let's try running it one more time. Uh, 
Okay, and the final welcome is, hi, Dr. Nick, your impressive journey from Rails. And it's picked one of the three uh, welcomes. Um, and it also gives an explanation for why it liked the one that, uh, why the one that it liked. So that's another example. Now that we have a little bit more confidence of, um, of that we can trust the AI or always produce structured output, we can really build some complex things uh, without having to do lots of mangling of the outputs and trusting and testing and poking and prodding to make sure that we get what we want. The, uh, I, the guy I've been using uh, some Grok and some Llama 3 models of late um, because of they're fast and they're free. Um, but I've got to be honest, this, this structured output is, uh, makes me think that maybe I, I want to make my models, uh, my, my automations, my, um, my flows, uh, more guaranteed of working every time, especially the ones where they interact with users, uh, because obviously a, a background error has to retry and it's slow and it's, uh, that's a bit pokey. So I'll be looking at uh, switching over. Uh, and obviously, hopefully, we all wish that the OpenAI module gets upgraded soon so that we get this new feature natively. But in the short term, you've now got uh, this output. Um, and I'll drop these uh, four blueprints down in the description. So if you wish to pick those up, they'll be there. And I'll please give the video a thumbs up. Um, it's, uh, it makes the world a better place. And uh, if you're not going to do that, that's fine. Pick up trash or something else helpful. That'd be great too. I'll see you in the next video.